Hello and welcome to another Halu Sees It review. Today I'm looking at Cheating Mages, published by AEG. Uh, it was originally uh, published in Japan and AEG has published it over here with the original uh, Japanese artwork. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at it. It's a bluffing uh, game for three to six players and uh, it takes about 30 uh, 30 minutes to play or so um, so it's it's pretty quick game uh, I think uh, players who enjoy bluffing games like the coup uh, the resistance uh, you know games like that uh, could really enjoy this game uh, you open it up you'll see it's a, a box here just big enough to hold kind of two decks of cards uh, and uh, and also the game includes some uh, cardboard uh, cutout uh, coins to keep track of a uh, score basically. Uh, and the idea of this game is that we are all mages. We've come to this uh, great match of these fighters. It's kind of a uh, you know whoever comes out last fighter standing, if you will. Uh, there's also uh, judges uh, that will be watching the match uh, that uh, will have some limitations and on what's going on. But the idea is we come here, uh, it's mages, we're going to bet on which fighter uh, we want to win. Uh, you can bet either on one fighter, uh, two fighters, or three fighters. Uh, you'll uh, players will take turns choosing what they want to do, put that face down, uh, go clockwise until everyone's placed their bet. Um, and basically what you're looking at here is there's actually 10 fighters. You'll play, uh, you'll shuffle these and have five out at a time. Uh, and you will look at the fighters that are on the, the table and you'll look at the different uh, spell cards that you have in your hand and you'll try to determine who you want to win the match, who you're going to place uh, your bet on. Uh, so everyone has betting tickets one through five corresponding to the different fighters. And what you'll see here is uh, the different fighters rank from power, a base power of 1 to 10, uh, and then a price associated with uh, the prize uh, money associated with that uh, certain fighter winning. So, for example, uh, we have the Goblin, which is the super underdog, which has a prize of 10, and then you have the Dragon, which is the base, has the highest base power. Of 10 but a, a prize value of 3 uh, so after everyone's figured that out what we're going to do is we're going to take turns uh, playing spells on the different fighters to either weaken or help the certain fighters uh, on the board and uh, according at the end of the once everyone's passed uh, you'll go until everyone's passed, uh, no longer wanting to play any more spells, and then you'll resolve uh, the spell cards, and you'll resolve any judgment that needs to take place. You have, uh, there's a bunch of different judge cards here. You'll play three rounds, is a complete game, and so you'll uh, encounter usually three judges. Sometimes the judges can be changed according to certain uh, spell cards that you may play. But, uh, for example, this one here disallows forbidden spells and has a mana limit of 15 and a judgment of dispel. So you'll see these on here. Um, the different uh, cards that will be played uh, have a mana amount in the top right-hand corner. And at the end of the round, you'll add up all of the different mana, and if that exceeds the limit, you uh, have to, the judgment comes into effect. A dispel would remove all the cards, uh, spells from that fighter. Uh, there's also an eject judgment, which would actually just, this uh, goblin would be ejected. He would not be able to win, uh, be eligible to win at all. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at what kind of spell cards can you do to uh, play to influence um, the fighters. So there's, uh, in the top left hand corner, you'll see the different kind of type. Uh, this is a direct spell. Uh, direct spells are all placed face up uh, next to the fighter uh, that you're playing it to. 
so we got a plus four there. Uh, enchantment cards signified in the top left hand corner here uh, are all played face down uh, next to the so other players won't know what you are playing now for an action instead of sp uh, playing a spell uh, an individual uh, player may discard a card to the discard pile uh, and uh, instead of resulting uh, you know, doing the resulting action or uh, spell from the hand card discarded, you can actually uh, discard that and look at all, if there are multiple cards, look at all the face down cards of one fighter. And that could uh, be very beneficial in figuring out, okay, what are people doing? Is this person trying to help this person win or make that person lose? And things like that. Uh, so it's kind of a, a balance. Uh, each person for it changes for different amount of players, but for like a three-person game, each person would start with eight different spell cards. At the end of the round, uh, then uh, players can then draw up to four cards, uh, not exceeding the eight uh, card limit. So if I only played two spells uh, the first round, I would only be able to draw two cards uh, at the end of the round. Uh, prior to starting the next. Uh, if I played, you know, seven of my eight cards, I would only be able to draw four, so I'm going to have five cards for the second round that I'm going into. Um, and depending on what, how, how you bet, so you can place your bet on one of the fighters, two of the fighters, three of the fighters, uh, and Based on that, so for example, like this orc, if I played just bet on the orc, didn't bet on any of the other fighters, I just put down the number four, um, and the orc wins, I would actually score double the prize money here shown. Uh, if I placed two bets, uh, I would score just what's shown. So if I placed a bet on the orc and the skeleton and the orc won, I would get the eight. And if I placed uh, a bet of three different people, like this person here, uh, then I would score half of the prize money of that fighter. Um, and there's a little more uh, rules and things uh, that go into the game, but that's basically it. Uh, there's uh, some support spells as well. We mentioned the direct face up, the enchantments face down. You also have support spells that are more of kind of a play and discard uh, type fashion. Uh, sometimes they have enduring and lasting effects uh, that uh, will stay with the fighter or the spell or whatever it is. Uh, one example, uh, I don't know, I don't think I have it out here, but one example of one of these cards, I think it's a forbidden one possibly, um, can't remember but anyway so like if there's one of these spells that you can place on one of the fighters and actually uh, I think it's an enchantment but uh, it would actually double the prize money uh, of the fighter uh, so that's kind of cool uh, you can also you know dispel remove other people's spells that they've laid down uh, you can kind of switch out fighters uh, there's spells that allow you to switch your bet so you, you know the match is going not as you had hoped uh, you can go ahead and switch out your bet. Um, different cards like that. So really, really fun uh, little bluffing game uh, for three to six players. Uh, the artwork is very interesting. I think it's actually pretty cool. Uh, the fighters, again, are pretty basic. Uh, there's not a whole lot of, uh, I guess, variation or interesting things about the fighters per se. Other than the skeleton and the ghost here, they have uh, some little... Uh, I don't know, not a special ability, but they have a, they react different to the spells. The skeleton and the ghost inverts the power of all spells played on it. So any of the plus spells of, you know, plus four power would actually be minus four power. Um, and any minuses would be pluses. So uh, that's kind of cool uh, Those when those come up. Uh, and then the judges, again, different mana limits, different effects. Uh, some judges uh, don't allow certain spells. Others uh, allow all of the spells. Uh, and, yeah, so you just play three rounds. Whoever has the most uh, money uh, at the end of three rounds wins.
and that is Cheaty Mages from AEG. I uh, really enjoyed uh, playing it. Again, uh, you know, if you like Coup or Werewolf or The Resistance, uh, games like that, you could really enjoy this as it has that good bluffing type component to it. Uh, it's a little chaotic at times too, so if you like games like Killer Bunnies or things like that where you know, you're know you not sure exactly what's going on, and it, it has a lot of uh, real fun elements to it. Uh, so go ahead and check it out, uh, Cheaty Mages by AEG.